Hi Heidi, here is your video with your information for the next few weeks here. Um, I'm going to start with writing. So for writing, we are going to, the expectation for Simeon is that he still logs on to the writing lessons and works along with his peers during those lessons. However, once Mrs. Baker assigns the assignment, do not worry about what she's assigning. You're gonna focus on only the materials that we're sending home. That will be Simeon's work. Um, so when she assigns it, don't worry about it. Uh, we're gonna modify Simeon's work a little bit to really try to build that independent piece for him more so we can really see what he is um, retaining and how he's growing and see where he's at, okay? So for writing, uh, there's a couple more of these blue books that are coming home. So the expectation for these blue books is that he completes one page per day. He should draw a picture on the page and then once he's drawn his picture, we want him to label it. So if he drew a picture of Sassy, then we want him to label Sassy. What we really wanna to try to focus on is him being able to sound out what he's hearing and try to independently spell it. So we'll, he'll draw Sassy, then he can draw a line out from the picture, have him try to write it the best that he can and then underneath it, if you could just write it in yellow and have him trace it so he's seeing exactly how it is spelled, that would be great. But we really wanna see what sounds he's hearing and, <clears throat> excuse me, and where he is with identifying those sounds throughout an entire word, okay? So make sure that he's doing that um, independently first and then you can provide him that prompt to spell it correctly, okay? So one page per day in this book. And then with that, this tiger packet is coming home. For six days, he's gonna go through and read this and you can have him read this every single day. So he'll read it. Then he will answer one of these questions per day. Okay, so next Monday, he'll do this line and draw one picture in the blue book and label it. That will be his writing, that is it. That is completed writing. No more than that. He does not have to worry about anything else. Then Tuesday, he'll draw a picture in the book, label it. Then he'll do number two. Again, each day, have him read this so that he's getting that information and starting to retain it. Okay, so one line per day, one picture per day. Um, this will be for six days because there's six sentences on here. And then days seven and eight, the first day, he will go ahead and read this, then cut out the pictures and glue them in, okay? So this writing day on day seven would be draw one picture and label it, complete this worksheet. Writing is done. That is it. Day eight, he will go through, he will draw a picture and label it in that blue book. Then he will go ahead and write the order of this. Now, he has this sheet to reference how to spell those words. First, let's try to have him copy it. Mm, never mind, don't do that. If you can write it in yellow, what he tells you. So if he says first coat, we want you to write coat and have him trace it the way that he's saying it. Um, again, we're really trying to see where he is at with comprehension and understanding of what he should be doing. Um, so if you can just write in yellow exactly what he says. So if he says first, first pants, write first pants. If he says first put pants on, then write first put pants on. But whatever comes out of his mouth is what we want you to write in yellow so that he can then trace over that. Um, so this would be day eight. So day eight, this sheet, and then a drawing. Um, days nine and 10 are just going to be a drawing and labeling in the blue book, okay? So those last two days, he'll only have one piece to complete. Now, if he's having a really rough day and you're like, okay, it's day three of this, of this packet pickup, and his day is just not going well, then adjust, then just have him draw a picture and label that day because you really have two days to kind of play with where he's only gonna do one item a day. Then have him draw it on, only do the drawing on Tuesday and call it a day. That's fine. You can modify that as needed, but this is all of the writing that he will be responsible for. So anything else Mrs. Baker assigns, do not worry about it right now, but he is still expected to attend those lessons and be able to listen to and start gaining that knowledge of what she's teaching to the class. All right.
So that is writing. Uh, reading, there's just some anchor charts for him. Nothing special there. He does have his books that are in his bag. That will be sent home for you. Um, for phonics, um, there will be a spelling test that will be taking place. I am going to give that spelling test to Simeon next Tuesday when he is here in person. So when they are doing that spelling test, excuse me, and you can have him try to do it, but if you think it would be better for him to just not be there and just take a little extra break that day during that time, that is fine. He does not have to sit there and listen and try to spell it. It may be too frustrating for him and he's going to be doing the work with me in class. Um, but there's also some other words that he can work on that are being sent home and then making it a snap word anchor chart. Um, that is phonics. For science, got some fun stuff this week. This pickup, I should say. So for science, they're going to be doing a lot of learning about seasons and the earth and the sun and the moon. So they have this um, project, I guess I'll call it, that they'll be working on. The brasses to hook this together are actually on a rubber band inside your book of bags. So those are in there in order to you can follow the group plan with that. This earth rotation worksheet, I went ahead and colored in yellow and underlined in black for the, the um, directions to give him a little bit more of a visual. You can walk him through this. Again, if he says day here and night here, then write day, night. If he says night and day, then write night and day. We really want to see what he's, what he's retaining and how, he's understand, how his understanding is of everything. Um, here, he'll just be cutting out and pasting the words in. I went and copied this because I thought it might be a little bit too small for him to trace over, so I just went and did that. Um, and the purpose of this isn't writing, it's science, obviously, so the information is more so what we're worried about him getting. We've got a anchor chart kind of for the month of the month and the seasons of the year. And then in this packet, which I have on top, so they are going to be making a Four Seasons book. And on the front, they need to indicate what the trees look like during those seasons that are listed underneath. Um, so what I've done is I've printed trees for Simeon to cut and paste on there rather than drawing. Um, because again, the focus isn't the drawing or the writing of this, it's the actual information of what does that look like. So if he can have a better visual of that, he's just going to cut and glue them on. So there's two copies on here because he'll have to glue one on the front for each season. And then each season has a page with a tree as well. Um, again, for this, the weather would be, if he says cloudy, write cloudy and have him trace it. And then this is what I would wear. There are, there is a worksheet at the back that he can cut out items or if he chooses to draw them that's fine but we want it to be the, the least frustrating for him because again the information is more important than him actually writing so he can cut those out and glue them on to what he would wear in those specific seasons so there's a summer small fall spring winter that is that worksheet This one, same thing. He's going to cut and paste them into the correct season. Here, he's going to pick one season and draw what you like to but draw what you like to feel, hear, smell, taste, and see during that season. So he's going to pick what would be, I would say, his favorite season um, would be the best way to go with this, so that it's something that he can connect with and relate to, and give that information into each of these boxes, so he can draw in those pictures. If this is something too that you feel like, okay, the drawing's too much, the writing's too much, again, it's the information. So if you guys have a, cop a printer at home and you wanna print out what he's telling you and he glue them on, that is perfectly fine. Please feel free to go ahead and do that. And then his favorite season here, if he can draw it and label. This one, I will want him to draw and label on, on drawing his favorite season, okay? That is science. Social studies, they're going to be working on past and present. 
So you have this worksheet here with a bunch of images on it, and then there's a table with past and present. I've marked past with red star and a red underline and present with a green star and a green underline. And then I've gone ahead and indicated that same color star that it aligns with um, on the images, okay? So you can tell him that and explain to him like this is past because it's old, this is present because it's new, and that kind of stuff, but I'm trying to help him see visually the connection of what past means, that it's older, and really be able to focus on those images a little bit clearer and understand the difference between the images versus just trying to understand past versus present. That's probably a little, little too complex for him and abstract for him to kind of understand, which is perfectly fine. But again, we want him to try to see the difference. So you could show him like, Computer is new because we work on computers just like your Chromebook, but the, I don't know where it is, I can't see it, there we go. The typewriter is old because that's what we used to work on, but we don't have those anymore. And explain that to him to show him the past versus the present. You can go through each one with him and show him that, and then he can put them on, that's perfectly fine. Again, we really want him to understand the information, not the whole process of what's going on necessarily at this point. That's a little might be a little too much motor planning and complex for him, which is perfectly fine. We're gonna get there. Um, same thing here, it's just another past present. You cut and glue them into their appropriate boxes. And then um, this one's gonna be talking about schools over time, what they looked like long ago and what they looked like today. I'm not 100% sure how many Miss Baker is going to want them to put in here. My expectation is that Simeon puts two things in each box. Okay, so again, if he says that something in the past was that they didn't have books, and he says no books, right, no books. Okay, so, and then have him in yellow, and then have him trace over that. For math, I've included um, a hundreds chart from one, from the number one to the number 200. Um, so what on this first worksheet that, that Simeon can use to look at and reference while he's doing these worksheets. So on this first one, he has to fill in the missing number. This is going to be a little complex for him. So I want you to try it with him. If it's too much, please skip. Just move on, skip it, it's fine. Down here, he has to put the next number in order. So this is what he can use the, uh, the number charts for. So he can go back and look and say, okay, the first one says three, four, and then there's a line. So what comes after the number four? He can go to his chart, reference his chart and say, okay, here's three, here's four, five. I know five comes after four. So he can go back to that worksheet then and he can write in the number four. Then he'd go back to his chart and say, okay, six, seven, eight. So we go six, seven, eight. After eight's a line, I know nine is missing. And he'll write in the number nine. On this one, he can use his work showing the number lines. So what I want him to do is we want him to understand that, okay, so five is my first number. I'm going to start at the number five. Where is five? Point to five. Great, there's five. We're going to jump four spaces, okay? So, cause we're gonna add or make our number bigger by four. Then he can physically draw and say one, two, three, four. I stopped on number nine. I know five and adding four more is total of nine. So you can go ahead and do those with him. Um, this one's supposed to be subtraction. I change it to addition right now because I just want to focus on addition. That's easier. Um, so we want to make sure he has a solid understanding of that first. This he can fill in just like kind of that first page and he can use that number chart that I supplied to help him fill that in. He does not have to do this in a day. This can be, you can do this over the period of the two weeks. That's perfectly fine. This will be a lot for him to do. And then this is a record sheet for a game that Miss Baker will be explaining. They also are going to be working on shapes, 3D shapes. Um, this is attached to it because on this first one, they need to draw in a real life object. 
Again, the information is our goal here, not the actual drawing and writing. So he will cut out the item that matches the 3D shape and glue it in to the appropriate row, uh, count, uh, row. Same thing here, he's going to cut these pieces out and glue them in to their appropriate column. The last one is a coloring. So he's going to go through and he's going to color the shape according to the image according to its shape. I've gone ahead and done everything in the colors that they should be so that he has a clear understanding of what that shape's going to look like and we'll hopefully be able to identify that down here. Okay. If this is proving to be too difficult for him to match to, you can go ahead and do what I did like on that past present and put an orange dot in every one that's a cone so that he can go in and color the orange dots to match the orange, to, I mean, to match the shape. A red dot in all the cubes. You can go ahead and do that. I was kind of curious just to see how he would do with something like this. It may be a little too much for him and that is okay. My recommendation would be that you start with the cones. Okay, let's find all the cones. Here's the shape we're looking for. Does this shape look like this? No, are we gonna color it? Nope, because it does not match. And go on like that. Okay, so um, here, this. Does this shape look like this? And you may have to cover like on this, some of these you might have to cover them up so that he can only see the portion that matches because having the ice cream there might get a little bit confusing for him and that's okay. So you might have to cover it up. And then if he says, yep, yeah, okay, great. What color are you coloring it? Orange, color it in orange and go ahead and go through it that way with him. Again, this is kind of a lot too. So if this is something you need to do over a couple days, please do it over a couple days. If you have to do one row, one color a day, then over five days, do it one color a day. That is perfectly fine. Um, they are going to be doing this uh, hot chocolate mug activity, so I've just stapled everything together for you so that you know where all those pieces are. Um, they have extra work in here. She, Mrs. Baker has months of the year that he can look at in their abbreviations, days of the week in their abbreviations, and I have a dream worksheet that they can do, as well as this winter fun packet. This is all extra stuff that he can do. This might be something to do if he's having a rough day too, to go in and just say, okay, math's not work. Go through it and say, okay, math's really tough today. Well, you know what? We can count the mittens. How many mittens look like this? This will be a short activity for him to do, but he'll still be getting that math work in and getting something from that. So please feel free to use this as a modification piece or a filler if you need to. Um, it's not required. It's just a fun packet for them to work on if needed. That is everything. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please let us know. And that is all. So I hope you guys have a great weekend and we will talk to you soon. Bye.